Hello, uh, it's from PTT. Uh, thank you for joining the session of uh, PTT Digital Roadshow today. Uh, we would like to present you the performance of third quarter and nine month performance of year 2019. Uh, today, Kun Pan Pon Sasananan, uh, VP of uh, Investor Relations, PTT, will present you uh, the overview and the outlook. And I, uh, Jitya Pawung Sarod, uh, Manager of Investor Relations, I will present you uh, the performance of this quarter. So let's start with Kun Pan Pon. Um, let's start with um, the activity highlight for the third quarter. Uh, for PTT, um, the first one that uh, PTT and Gulf, uh, we won the bidding uh, of the Mataput uh, Industrial Port uh, Phase uh, 3. Uh, this project, we joined with uh, Gulf, uh, PTT holds 30%, and then Gulf holds 70%. Uh, uh, the first phase of this project will be the land cremation with um, the um, the investment around 13 billion baht, and then the rest will be uh, uh, the LNG terminal, which uh, now it's uh, under studying. And um, the second activities for PTT is the uplift of the uh, an NGV price for public vehicles, which start um, in the September, bit of September. Uh, this one, this is the second time for the uplift of the uh, NGV price for public vehicle. The first time uh, was in uh, mid of May, and we target to have uh, the third one in uh, next year, in January. And next is the um, PGT uh, Treasury Center. We uh, repurchased the U.S. Uh, notes and replaced with the, uh, the, the U.S. notes uh, the same, the same return and uh, the same uh, tender. Um, for uh, PDTEP, they complete uh, the Murphy acquisition in Malaysia in July. Uh, and um, they add the stake in uh, Sin Pohong project, which is in the northeast of uh, Thailand. Uh, increased the stake from uh, 67 to 81 percent in July as well. And the last one for PTEP is the, the complete uh, acquisition of Partex, which is um, in the Middle East. In uh, we target to complete this uh, acquisition in November. Um, let me update you about the uh, uh, construction for uh, the GC, uh, which is the Maptaput Litrofit. Uh, the capacity from the olefin is around uh, 750 kTA. And uh, currently, uh, the construction is around 73%. Uh, and uh, another project is the PL polio. Uh, construction is around 80%. The polio is the, um, uh, the feed to the uh, to produce the uh, polyurethane, which is uh, uh, the feed for the memory foam. This is uh, one of the product of the polio, the, the, the end product of the polio. And both uh, of the project will be complete by next year. And next is for IRPC. IRPC, they have the low sulfur fee oil project, uh, which is, this is uh, the project that they prepare for the IMO to 2020. And uh, they have the capacity around uh, 42,000 tons, uh, 42,000 tons per, per month. Um, next for the, next is the Thai oil. Uh, they are under the construction of the project is called the green field project uh, which is to increase the capacity from uh, 275 kbd to 400 kbd and currently uh, the progress of the construction is around 20 percent the cod for the uh, the green field project will be in the first quarter of 2023 next is um, the ptor uh, which is uh, currently 100% uh, owned by PTT. Uh, they they established the, the two the holding company, which is the arm um, length for investment in Thailand and Singapore. Um, and you see from uh, the the program of the PTOR, it's called Thai Debt, which is the um, uh, the program that support the Thai commodities market for uh, the marketplace. And the last one for PTOR is the, um, the startup of the solar loop project, solar rooftop project. Currently, we have around three uh, in three gas station, and then for this year, it's hard to get to up to five in uh, the PT gas station. 
And the last uh, activity highlights for the third quarter is the GPSC. They complete uh, the capital increase uh, through the light of right offering and uh, the project of a uh, Sayaburi uh, power plant has been complete in uh, October. They start COD in October. This project, the Sayaburi uh, GPSC holds uh, uh, 25%. And the last one for GPSC is the Namlik power plant in Laos, uh, the COD in July, and uh, GPSC uh, holds 40% uh, in Namlik. Um, next, uh, may I mention to you about the low light in the third quarter? Uh, p for PDT, uh, we uh, record uh, around 1 billion baht for the employee uh, expense, uh, which uh, according to the State Enterprise Labor Relating Committee, they announced to uh, increase uh, the employee benefit from t 300 days to 400 days. So PDT uh, record this expense in the third quarter. And for PTEP, uh, um, PTP uh, record the expense of the write-off of three wells in Myanmar in the third quarter as well. And in the third quarter, uh, we have the turnaround and shutdown for GC for the aromatic uh, one uh, in by, by May and June. And for Thai oil, they have the plan shut down for the refinery, the CDU3, and the aromatic. And the last one is the IRPC. They have the shutdown of the refinery uh, for 18 days in August. This is uh, all the highlight in third quarter. So next, Kunjidiyapa will present you for the performance of uh, PDT. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next page. This is the overview of the PTT performance, uh, the consolidated performance on the third quarter that compared to the second quarter. If you see on the left-hand side, first on the uh, Dubai, uh, which is the key driver that has been declined Q on Q for around 9%. So that uh, contribute to the decline of the revenue for around 6%, that most of the uh, petroleum and petrochemical price has been uh, dropped. So uh, the revenue has been declined in the segment like trading, uh, petrochemical and refining and oil business. And the gas business as well because of the lower of the gas sales volume. And when we look at the EBITDA, uh, the earning before interest tax and depreciation, uh, you will see that Q1Q is declined for around 8%. This is uh, mainly because of uh, expiration and production that or uh, they have lower EBITDA from the wheels right off in Myanmar and also the gas business that or uh, the gas suppression plant has been uh, declined from the selling price that linked with the petrochemical price like HDPE and PP. Uh, the power business uh, as well that got the seasonal effect lower with the sales volume. And the net income declined uh, quarter and quarter to uh, 22% uh, to close at around uh, 20 billion baht in third quarter this year, uh, mainly because of the EBITDA that has been lower, as I mentioned before, and also uh, less of the foreign exchange gain because of the baht uh, appreciate uh, in this quarter has been less than uh, the last quarter on the second quarter. And the high of depreciation due to the acquisition of the Murphy of PTTEP that are fully recognized on the third quarter. Even though the tax expense has been lower, so uh, the net income quarter and quarter has been uh, lower for around 22%. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next page that uh, I will come jump back on the key business driver that are. Uh, is the key driver that usually uh, PTT look for and uh, resulted to our performance. Uh, we start on the left hand side, uh, the average Dubai price and fuel oil price. Uh, the average Dubai price quarter and quarter has been declined for around 9%. Uh, this is uh, on the third quarter, they closed lower at around uh, six, uh, $60. Per barrel, so that's why we have seen some stock loss in uh, refineries, and also uh, you see that the fuel oil price has been declined as well, but much volatile than Dubai price. This is because of the IMO effect. Uh, you will see that uh, 
Q1 Q, the fuel oil price is not decline much, just around 5% because that there's some uh, still demand on the high sulfur uh, fuel oil, uh, while the supply has been shorted because uh, the refinery prepared for the IMO. But by the way, uh, on in October, you will see that the fuel oil price has been dropped to around forty-seven uh, dollar per barrel. This is you can see that the IMO impact start to affect. On the right hand side, uh, the average natural gas price. Uh, I will show you uh, the average pool price, which is in the dark blue line. Uh, this price has been pretty much stable. It's the PTT price that with it of three sources. Uh, one is from Gulf Gas, which is account for around 70% of the gas uh, that we uh, supply. And uh, another 30%, uh, half half, is the LNG that we import. And uh, another one is the import gas from Myanmar, that uh, our neighboring country. So these uh, three weather average source is uh, the gas price of PTT. You see that quarter and quarter it has been flat, but actually, if you see in the bad term, is uh, a little bit decline from the Gulf gas cost that are uh, linked with the fuel oil price that lag for our six to twelve months. So uh, I also show you the LNG price that uh, reflect our thirty percent of the weather average cost. Uh, the JKM that's the spot LNG price, the market price. You will see that the spot price has been pressured for a while since the uh, beginning of this year because of the supply that came in uh, from uh, Australia, from Russia, and also US that still continue and make the price still at the low level. Uh, in October, the price will stay at around $4.6 per mm BTU. But compared to the JLC uh, LNG, this one is the represent for long term LNG contract. This one, the price would not much volatile because it's the long term contract, and the price in the third quarter has been a little bit improved. So uh, this one would be more represent to the PTT pool price since we are uh, majority of our import is the long term contract. On the left bottom, you will see the petrochemical spread that we show you both olefins and aromatics. The olefin we show you the spread of HDPE and PP. You will see that uh, this year the olefin price has been a lot pressure from uh, the trade war effects and the economic slowdown. So uh, comparing quarter on quarter, uh, HDPE spread has been dropped for around 15%. This is also the additional effect of the seasonal in rainy season that are uh, less demand on, on the petrochemical of the olefins. And uh, another side of supply still also uh, continue to pressure on the HDPE and PP. But in PP, the supply side has been a uh, support from the turnaround in uh, of the refineries in, in in the Indonesia, so that's why uh, they have been not going down much, just only two percent. But uh, when we see for the aromatic side, the PX spread has been lower as well. Uh, comparing quarter and quarter, has been lower for around thirteen percent. Uh, this is mainly because of the capacity that's been added in, uh, like the Hengli uh, that uh, was in China. So this one pressure on the price side as well. And the benzene spread, you will see that it has been improved a lot on quarter and quarter, on the third quarter. Uh, benzene has been pressure since the beginning of the year and just been uh, recovered on this third quarter because of the uh, some of the supply has been uh, released uh, to the US, like uh, the export in Asia. So that's why uh, the price has been moving up and the inventory has been lower. Let's see on the right hand side, which is the average foreign exchange rate that we show you. Uh, you will see that BAT uh, has been appreciated uh, since the beginning of the year, and quarter and quarter still uh, BAT still appreciate. It closed uh, low, lower at around uh, 30.77, and the BAT has been appreciated for around 0 0.1 BAT, which is less than uh, the second quarter that BAT appreciate more around 1 BAT. So, uh, you can expect the lower of the foreign exchange gain. Next, I will show you uh, the call business of PT, which is the gas business, oil retail uh, marketing, and also the trading business. Uh, compared to 
quarter on quarter, you will see that overall of the performance of these three business has been declined for around 6%. Uh, mainly is from gas business. The gas business, EBITDA, this one uh, we show you the EBITDA uh, quarter on quarter has been declined for around 9%. This is mainly come from the gas separation plant business. Uh, I will walk you through on each business unit so you, you will see uh, the each effect. S&M stands for the supply and marketing, which is the sale and marketing. This one, the performance has been lower from the gas sale volume. That uh, is a seasonal effect that normally uh, the peak season is in quarter two and quarter three is the rainy season. So there's some more of the import hydro that uh, been replaced with the gas that uh, the power sector call. For TM, this is stand for the transmission pipeline. Uh, it's pretty much stable or a little bit decline for one percent uh, with uh, higher uh, the expense. And gas suppression plant, this one uh, has been uh, pretty much declined for around eighteen uh, percent. This is mainly because of the price of the petrochemical that uh, linked to the selling price. As I mentioned before, the HDPE price has been uh, declined for around fifteen percent. So this one. Uh, contribute to the lower of the uh, margin even though the gas sale volume of the gas separation plant has been getting better uh, because comparing to uh, the second quarter uh, we don't have plant turnaround in the third quarter while second quarter we have plant turnaround of gas separation plant six uh, so uh, the volume has been increased but uh, the margin still dropped because of the selling price for NGV, this is the natural gas for vehicle. Uh, this one that uh, we still have been capped the price, but the good news is that in the third quarter, we still got uh, another one step uplift for the public sector, another one baht uplift. So now we can sell the public sector price at around 12.62 baht per kilogram. Uh, we have been uplift for two times already. The, the first one is on 16 May, and the second one is on 16 September. Even though uh, the public sector got uplift from the price, uh, the gross margin has been uh, improved but, uh, in EBITDA side because of the higher SG&A. So that's why uh, the performance seemed to be a little bit lower for 2%. For other business, this is uh, stand for mainly is the PTT LNG that we're doing the LNG regasification. So this one we hold 100%. And another one stand for uh, industrial customer that we sell to uh, name PTT and GD. So uh, this one, the performance pretty flat. Just, uh, just to brief overview a bit for, for nine month performance. Nine month performance has been also lower as well uh, for gas business. This is mainly from uh, the gas separation plan as well that uh, the chemical price comparing to last year uh, has been dropped uh, pretty much because uh, last year has been uh, the peak level for the HDPE that uh, China has been limit the, the import of the recycle that's why they import more HDPE and build on the demand so the price has been peak on the last year and this year uh, is become lower uh, with the pressure of the trade war and the feed gas cost of the gas separation plant also increased that was quit on the margin of the gas separation plant but uh, when comparing to the volume uh, the volume of the gas separation plant has been a little bit improved because of the uh, exactly have a little bit lower sorry because of more turnaround in this year we have some of the unplanned turnaround on the first quarter that uh, from the effect of the public storm that uh, some of the gas fuel has been closed so that's why GSP need to be turned off as well so uh, mainly of the nine month performance uh, contribution is uh, from the lower of the gas performance that uh, the gas separation plan has been lower and the sales and marketing that been lower uh, from the selling of the industrial customer that linked to the fuel oil price. Uh, when we talk on the oil business, uh, on the next one, I will start on the quarter and quarter first. For oil business, it has been a little bit uh, decline for just around 1%. Uh, this one, uh, the ex exactly the volume of the oil, vo uh, oil volume has been declined and they have more stock loss uh, compared to the second quarter. So uh, this one has been uh, make the gross margin of the 
of the oil business has been lower when we include the stock loss. But when we exclude the stock loss, exactly the margin has been improved. This is mainly from the gasoline, uh, that the gasoline spread has been improved. Uh, so the overall performance of the oil business has been a little bit declined for 1%. For trading business, uh, it has been improved a lot for around 78%. This is mainly of the uh, gain on the derivatives that uh, is kind of like the mismatch that we have the, the loss on the paper in the second quarter and in the third quarter to match. Uh, they have gain on the fixed cost, so that's why uh, they contribute to the more margins of trading on the quarter and quarters. And for nine months and nine months, oil business has been improved for around uh, has been declined for around 2%. Uh, this is mainly from the sales volume as well that uh, has been dropped, especially in LPG and diesel. Uh, the, the LPG one has been uh, declined from a high, high of the competition uh, of this year. And also uh, the, the marketing margin exactly has been improved when we uh, take the effect of the stock out, uh, you will see that the margin uh, of the oil marketing has been improved. This one because of the uh, aviation uh, business and also from the diesel spread. Uh, this diesel spread last year has been got a lot of pressure from the high competition and the aviation uh, is is about the price structure that uh, this year the structure is in the decreasing trend that's why favor on the aviation business comparing to last year which is more upward trend in the first nine months for trading business you will see that the price has been uh, dropped for around 64 percent uh, to 1600 uh, this one is mainly because of the price of the condensate that got pressure from the substitute of the light crude that has been uh, the price has been lower this year so that's why we gave more discount on the condensate which is the majority contribution for trading business so uh, we move to the next slide which is like the sum up of the performance that uh, we show you in the waterfall format uh, with the divide in the business segment and also in the middle you will see that what contribute to the lower of the performance of net income uh, on quarter three the net income has been lower for around 22 percent uh, at around 20 billion baht this one mainly uh, came from the margin that has been dropped in most of the business segment as I mentioned before that linked to the Dubai price that's lower and also the petrochemical prices has been dropped. Why the stock uh, loss this one uh, seems to be less because this one we include the net realizable value that closed at the end of the period so uh, that's some of the uh, gain on the stock. And the OPEC as well that has been uh, lower comparing to the second quarter. This is one because of the one-time item that uh, PTT uh, we we have the we have booked the expense of employees according to uh, the state and price law around one billion baht at this quarter. And also uh, depreciation and amortization that has been uh, improved. This is um, uh, has been uh, I mean increased. This is because of the higher of the sale volume of ATEP that they acquired Murphy in the third quarters. And also the other incomes has been uh, lo lower, if you see on the middle, uh, has been lower for around 900 million baht. This is from the, the one-time one item that book on the second quarter that is a gain for IRPC of the penalty income from USV. And the foreign exchange rate and derivative also declined. This is because of the list of the foreign exchange gain with the bad appreciation that has uh, less than the second quarters. With the lower of the tax expense, so uh, make the performance of the third quarter close as around 20 billion bahts. And on the last slide for this section, this is about the statement of financial position the balance sheet of PTT consolidated that has been improved for around three percent uh, to to about uh, 2,400 uh, billion billion baht so this one mainly from the acquisition of this GPSC that acquired global business so they make the plant and equipment 
has been increased and also uh, the interest bearing debt which is in, in the liability size so that made the total as asset and also total liability uh, has been increased and you will see that this also effect on the right hand side on the gearing ratio of PTT itself that uh, we have the policy of the net debt to equity not over one times on the green one you will see that uh, the ratio has been increased from 0 0.08 on the end of year 2018 and close at nine months is increased to 0 0.25 this is from the effect of the liability in increase and also the net debt to EBITDA increased to 1.14 but still lower than our policy at two times. This is uh, the effect of the higher liabilities from uh, GPSC acquisition glow as well as the EBITDA that has been uh, softened this year. But our PDT credit rating still uh, maintained at, uh, with the sovereign, uh, sovereign levels still in a good position. So next uh, for next part, uh, let's Kun Pan Pon brief you for the outlook of year 2020. Yes. Um, let me start with um, the first quarter, uh, the th fourth quarter of this year. Uh, for the Dubai price, uh, since there will be more U.S. Uh, crude export uh, after they complete the pipeline in the fourth quarter, and then um, the fourth quarter is the there will be more capacity uh, after uh, the the peak refinery in uh, in October. So there will be more of the crude in the fourth quarter. So we think that uh, the Dubai uh, will be lower in the fourth quarter uh, from the third quarter around 61.2 uh, will be lower around a range around 60, uh, around 60 to 60, uh, 55 to 60. And for next year, uh, we think that uh, the Dubai will trade at the narrow range, uh, which will be around like uh, 56 to $60 per barrel. For the diesel, you can see that uh, in the fourth quarter, there will be uh, the stock built up uh, ahead of the IMO uh, regulation in 2020. And uh, there will be uh, more demand ahead of the winter and the uh, demand after the monsoon. So we think that in the fourth quarter, it will be the spread of the diesel or the gas oil will be get better. Um, for the third quarter, uh, the spread of the diesel is around 15.4. But in the fourth quarter, we think that the range of the diesel should be around like 17 to $18 per barrel. But um, for next year, the spread of the uh, gas oil will be get better and better since uh, the IMO effective starting from the 1st uh, of January next year. So we think that the range of uh, the diesel spread should be around like 80 to $21 per barrel. And the last one that I'm going to update you about uh, the spread is the fuel oil. Um, the fuel oil has been effect uh, impact by uh, the IMO 2020. So you can see that uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, the, the the fuel oil spread is BB uh, minus 13 in the fourth quarter. It start to uh, get uh, the, uh, the minus in October, but in the third quarter, the, du uh, the uh, fuel oil to Dubai is around $1 per barrel. Next year, we think that it will be get worse since the IMO effect. So uh, for PTT group, we think that the fuel oil spread will be go down to around like 12 to $16 per barrel. And uh, for Singapore GRM, um, for this year, it should be around like 4 to $5 per barrel. And next year, it will be lower since uh, we think that uh, uh, it will be impact from the supply of the, the crude. Mm -hmm. Um, next is the PDT group uh, upcoming project. Uh, let me start with the uh, 2019 first. Uh, I mentioned you already about uh, PDT EP that they acquired uh, the Bongkut and Erawan in June, the Murphy in Malaysia in July, and the Pateks uh, in Middle East in November. And then they will complete the stake in uh, 
s i n p u h o m in the northeast uh, field of Thailand in the fourth quarter, maybe by November. And for RPC, uh, they complete the catalyst cooler project, which is um, uh, the crude selection project, and uh, they have complete the uh, low sulfur fuel oil prepare for the IMO next year. For GPSC, they complete the acquisition of uh, the glow. Uh, to add about uh, 2,271 megawatts to GPSC, and then uh, in October, the COD of the Sayaburi will add more uh, megawatt to GPSC with um, stake around 25 percent. And the last one, this is the Cup Four expansion in the fourth quarter. So next year, uh, there will be uh, the project coming up. From GC, the first one is the Mataput retrofit. We will add around 750 kta of the olefin, and uh, the PO polio. We will add on around 330 uh, kta, mm -hmm. and the last project in uh, next year will be uh, the Nawanakon power plant. We will add more, uh, mm -hmm. and then the capacity will going up to around 185 uh, megawatts. For 2021, uh, PDT will complete the fifth pipeline, which is the pipeline from the east to the west of Thailand, uh, and will add capacity around 10%. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the PTEP, they will, they will uh, complete the project of the Algeria to add about 10 to 13 KBD. Uh -huh. so, and another one, another project, uh, I think it will be complete by maybe 2021 and 22, which is the terminal number two of PTT. Uh, it will add about uh, 7.5 million tons per annum. And then uh, after we have this uh, terminal, uh, the total terminal, the total capacity for the LNG terminal going up to around 19, uh, 19 million tons per annum. Um, let me give you the guideline for the fourth quarter this year um, and, and, and the next year as well. Uh, for the gas trend, you can see that uh, in the fourth quarter, we think that the, the gas cost will be quite flat. And by, but next year, since it will be uh, the impact from the IMO and the fuel oil will be lower, so we think that uh, the gas cost will be a little bit lower. It will be start to lower by the mid of next year since uh, the lag time of the gas cost is around uh, six months to 12 months. Uh, for the joint venture between PTT and PTT, uh, through PTT tank and the Gulf, uh, of the Gulf uh, MTP energy terminal, this one uh, will be start the uh, land reclamation by mid of next year and for uh, the GSP, next year we're gonna have uh, the GSP five number five and GSP number one, uh, the turn the the shutdown uh, in the first half, and uh, as I mentioned at the beginning that the NGV price will target to uplift another one baht for the uh, uh, public vehicle in uh, January next year. Let me give you. Uh, uh, brief on uh, the IMO benefit to PTT Group. Let's start with the uh, downstream. Uh, since uh, PTT Group, the product yields mostly are the uh, diesel, which is around like 45 to 50 percent. So when the spread of the diesel is going up according to the, the IMO uh, impact, so it will be the positive benefit to the our downstream, including like Thai oil, RPC, and GC. For the upstream, like the gas business through PTT, uh, since uh, there will be the, the lower the gas cost starting from the mid of uh, next year. So this will be one of the benefit to PTT. And by the way, since the fuel, fuel oil spread will be get lower, this will be impact to uh, PTT through the industrial sector, which uh, accounts around like uh, seven to 8% of the, uh, the gas sale volume. 
for PTT EP since uh, the gas price, the selling price is linked one third is linked to the high sulfur fuel oil, so it will be impact to uh, the gas sales uh, price of PTT EP. But by the way, uh, PTT EP they have uh, done the, the hedging to uh, minimize the the uh, negative impact from from the the fuel oil spread. And uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, PTEP, they think that they will complete the Partex acquisition and uh, the project that they add a stake in Sinpu Home in the fourth quarter. And next year, they think that they will uh, have the sales volume around 345 KBD. Um, the rest is um, the turnaround for GCRP and GPSC. Uh, for GPSC, uh, the COD of the Sayaburi will be in the fourth quarter, uh, which uh, uh, GPSC hold 25%. And uh, for next year, uh, the COD of the Nawanakon power plant will start in the third quarter of next year. Okay, so uh, there's questions from uh, online. The first one is, could you update on the timeline of PTTOR? Um, since uh, we are in the process uh, of the filing, so we could comment on the, the timeline of the PTOR right now. Uh -huh. And the second one, they ask if you plan to list that PTTOR in uh, stock uh, SGX or SET, uh, which is definitely uh, SET. Right. <laughs> so uh, the third one is what is the CAPEX plan for 2020, uh, which is next year? But uh, need to inform first that uh, the CAPEX plan, the new one, uh, will be released uh, in December this year. So uh, the one that uh, we gave you will be uh, the one that approved by the board at the last year. So uh, the, the year 2020 mainly is the infrastructure one that we still uh, continue on the like LNG Terminal 2 in Nong Fab and also uh, the pipeline number 5. And, and also uh, some of the other JV, which is mainly for PTTOR. Mm -hmm. um, you think that we're going to finalize for the CAPEX for the next five years by the end of this year? Yeah, but, but one thing we can expect on the map the food number right. three that right. will put in uh, the CAPEX plan this year, but, but the plan we, we give you now is not included yet. Um, the next uh, question is about the outlook for the petroleum. We already updated already. Yeah. So next is about the dividend policy. Okay, um, you can see that our dividend policy is around uh, not less than 25% of the net income. But uh, for the interim dividend, we pay around like uh, 0.9 baht per share, uh, which, are, which is around like 47% uh, payout ratio. Uh, the paid up, uh, the, pay, the payment, of the, the date of the payment is uh, on October 25th. Mm -hmm. And the next question asks about what is your revenue and margin outlook on LNG project? I think the, the LNG terminal we have. Uh, since uh, the, the LNG uh, the, the outlook for the LNG, if you talk about the outlook for the LNG, uh, the spot price, it will be get lower or uh, stable at this level since um, uh, there will be a lot of uh, the supply from like from Australia or from US. So we think that the it's be quite pressure uh, on the, the, the LNG spot price. But by the way, for PTT, we, uh, the gas that we uh, use is not only from the LNG. 70% uh, is come from uh, the Gulf and 30% uh, 15% uh, is come from LNG and 15% is come from the Myanmar gas. So we blend all the, the gas uh, feed to like both the power plant or the gas separation plant or the NGV. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and would like to just add on on the LNG project, or if if you mean for PT LNG 
terminal that we have now, we as Kun Pan Pon mentioned, we have a uh, capacity for around 19 million ton that has been approved, but uh, only one terminal, uh, terminal one that has been COD, and we recognize revenue at 10 million tons per annum since January this year already. Uh, so. It's about next year that uh, the, the revenue recognition of the Terminal 1 that we have capacity for about 11.10. So uh, let, let's see for next year if we can add on another 1.5 uh, from uh, ECAT that uh, they will import the LNG and use the Terminal 1. But for Terminal 2, uh, another 7.5 million ton per annum, they will be COD on year 2022. So uh, that one would come in later. So it seems uh, no it's more creation. No more okay. So uh, if there's no more question, uh, we will close the uh, presentation today. But uh, feel free to email any more questions on the uh, PTT uh, website or email of PTT-IR at PTTPLC.com. That is uh, the back of the uh, the presentation we give you. So uh, thank you for today for joining our session. Thank you.